this is a tutorial video for writing formulas for ionic compounds. So this is your ionic compounds worksheet that I'm going to do a few problems from and just explain the process of writing um, ionic formulas. Um, so the main goal for this worksheet is to write formulas for all of these different ionic compounds. Um, so combining these positive cations with these negative anions um, in a way that you will get your formula for your ionic compound in these boxes here. Um, but remember that the main thing to keep in mind is that all of these formulas for ionic compounds will be neutral. So we have positive cations, negative anions, but when we combine them, we want to combine them in a way that cancels out their charge. So nothing in the boxes you write here, all of these formulas, should all be neutral. You should have no charges in here. Okay, so in order to get used to that, we're going to do the back, a few questions from the back side first. Okay, so this idea that we need to balance charges. So this top part is just asking what coefficients do you need in front of these charges for them to cancel out and equal zero. So the very first one, if we have a positive two charge on the cation and a negative one charge on the anion, um, we need two of the negative charges in order to cancel the positive two charge because if we do 2 times negative 1 will give us negative 2, and we add that to positive 2, they'll cancel out and equal 0. So the coefficient here is 2. And this is just to get you in the habit of canceling these charges and seeing what's the smallest number that you can add together here um, to make these charges cancel. Um, so we'll skip down to this one. Here you have a plus 4 charge. Here you have a negative 1 charge. So if you had 4 of these, then you'd have plus 4 minus 4 and that would cancel out. Okay, so let's do one more. Um, this is a very common situation to have when you have a positive three and a negative two, right? Here, you actually need coefficients for both of them, um, and the smallest number that both three and two fit into is six. So you want both of these, the positive number and the negative number, to be six. So in order to make positive three six, we need two of those. Um, and in order to make the negative 2 a 6, or a negative 6, we need 3 of those, right? So we have 2 times positive 3 gives us positive 6. 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6. So we have 6 plus negative 6 equals 0. Um, and we could go back and put um, these coefficients would be 1 for these numbers. Okay. And now taking that idea a little bit further in the lower half of the back side of the worksheet, you're now given the actual cations and anions. But again, we will need to look at their charges here. So this um, example here that I want to look at, we have a lead with a 4 plus charge and sulfur with a negative 2 charge. So this is the sulfide anion. Okay, so if we have a plus 4 and a negative 2, what would be the smallest number that they both fit into? Well, it would be 4, right? Here we already have 4. Here. We know that 2 times 2 equals 4, right? So we can put a 2 here. So if we have 2 of these, we'll get negative 4. And here we have a positive 4. Again, if you want to write in the 1. Um, but that means that we need 1 of these, and we need 2 of these. And remember, we wouldn't write any charges in our formula. Okay, so I needed 1 of the leads, 1 of the PBs. So I just need 1 of those. Um, the sulfurs, though, I needed two. So the way we show that is by using a small subscript, where subscripts go below. So it's PBS with a subscript two. So that shows that we have one lead and two sulfurs. Okay. Um, next one, we have aluminum with a three plus charge and oxygen with a negative two charge. So again, this is like above when we had to balance these two numbers. So we know that 6 is the smallest number that both 2 and 3 go, in, go into. So that means we need 2 of the aluminums, right? 2 times positive 3 will give us 6. And here we need 3 of the oxygens, because 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So now these charges will cancel out. So when we go to write our formula, we just look at what the coefficients we needed, and now we turn those into subscripts. So aluminum, we needed two of those, subscript two. Oxygen, we needed three of those. 
So the formula here is Al2O3. Okay, a couple more on this back side. Here we have iron with a positive two charge, and this anion um, is called sulfate. It's on the back of your periodic table, and this one is a polyatomic ion. So remember, polyatomic, poly meaning many, polyatomic ions are ions that contain more than one type of element. So here we have this ion is made up of both sulfur and oxygen. This iron is a monatomic ion. It's just made out of one element, iron. Okay, but we're going to do this part the same. We have 2 plus here, 2 minus here, so actually our job is very easy. We only need one of each. They already cancel out, plus 2 minus 2. So when I go to write the formula, I only needed one of both of them. So the irons, if we need one, we don't write any subscript. So I just needed one iron. And then SO4, that's the entire formula. So you can't change the numbers there. But this SO4 formula, you only needed one of them. So you write it exactly as it's seen, SO with the subscript 4. But that SO4, we just needed one, so we're not adding any other numbers to it. Sometimes, though, we will have to do that. So like on this last example, here we have barium 2 plus and the nitrate anion. This is nitrate, NO3 minus. Again, it's on the back of your periodic table. So again, we have here is a monatomic ion, barium, just one element. Here we have a polyatomic anion. It's made up of nitrogen and oxygen. And in this one, it's a little bit different. Here we have a positive 2 charge and a negative 1 charge. So in order for the charges to balance, we need two of the nitrate ions. right? So if we need two of those, when we go to write the formula, it's going to be a little different. Bariums, we just needed one. So put BA. But now, when we need to write two nitrates, it's a little bit trickier because we can't just write NO3, 2, that's very confusing, right? We can't do that. What we're really trying to say is that we need two of this entire ion, and the formula for that ion is NO3. So we need NO3. We can't change the formula. But what we can do is put this entire formula in parentheses, and what we need to say is that we need two of this entire formula. So then we put a subscript 2 outside of the parentheses. So that means we needed one barium and two nitrates. Okay? So that means any time that you need more than one of a polyatomic ion, you have to have parentheses. So any polyatomic, which means it has more than one element, if you have to have more than one of them, you need parentheses. Here we had a polyatomic, but we only used one, so we didn't need parentheses. So let's remember that as we go to the front side of this worksheet. So what I'm going to do actually is make a note to myself about that, and let's first identify all of the polyatomic ions. Right. So looking on the top, the anions, this is just chlorine, one element. Here, this is carbonate. It has carbon and oxygen. This is polyatomic. This has oxygen and hydrogen. It's called hydroxide. It's polyatomic. Sulfate, we talked about that one. That's polyatomic. Phosphate, polyatomic. Nitrate, polyatomic. There's one other polyatomic, and it's actually a cation. It's called ammonium. It has nitrogen and hydrogen, so those are also polyatomic. So then my note here is that anything in the circle is polyatomic. And we need um, parentheses if we need more than one of them. Then we'll have to put it in parentheses. So you can make some kind of note to yourself to remind you. So let's go through, and I'm just going to do three of these rows with you. Um, so follow along on your worksheet. Um, and we're going to start with these, this ammonium one. It's kind of a tricky one. Okay, so this is polyatomic, but its charge is plus one. So what we're going to do is match up these boxes to write the formula. And remember, nothing in here will have charges because we want to cancel the charges. So the first one is the combination of ammonium and chloride. So 
we have a plus one, minus one. Well, that's easy because they already cancel. So we just need one of each. And remember that the cation, these ones, always come first. Always, always. That's the rule. So we just write NH4. Because that comes first. We just needed one of them. And then Cl, we also only need one. So that's it. Next, NH4 plus and carbonate, CO3, 2 minus. So we have a plus 1 and a minus 2 charge. So this time, we need two of these, right, to balance out the negative 2 charge. And this is polyatomic, which means if I need more than one of them, which I do, I have to put it in parentheses. So NH4, and I said I needed two of them, right, to balance out. And then CO3. Hopefully you write smaller and don't use up as much space as I do, okay? So we needed parentheses for that one because we used more than one of a polyatomic. All right, next we have ammonium with hydroxide, plus one, minus one. So actually that one's, again, easy. We just need one of each, so no parentheses are needed. Okay, moving on, we have plus one, minus two, in sulfate. So again, plus one minus two, we need two of the ammoniums. So it's polyatomic. I need parentheses if there's more than one, which again, I need two this time. And then the SO4 sulfate, I just need one of those. And you copy its formula exactly. You're not changing that four. That's part of its formula. All right, next we have phosphate, PO4 three minus and NH4 plus. So now with this negative three, that means we need three of these ammoniums. So again, I need more than one, so I need to put it in parentheses, but this time I need three. The PO4s, I just need one of those. All right, and then last one for this row, NH4 plus combining with nitrate, NO3 minus. This is a minus one, this is a plus one, so they automatically cancel. We do not need parentheses because it's only if there's more than one. But here we just need one of each. So it's NH4 and O3. Okay, so it looks complicated, but that's just one of each. That's just one of each, the cation and the anion. All right, let's go on to calcium here. Calcium has a positive two charge. So again, we're going to combine it with all of these anions. So the first one is a positive 2 with a negative 1. Well, I know they can both go into 2, which means I need two of these chloride ions. Okay, so Ca, and then I need two of these, um, but do I need parentheses? Mm, no, it's not polyatomic, right? This is a monatomic ion. I only need parentheses if it's more than one of a polyatomic. So this monatomic one, if I need two, I just write two. Okay. So I don't need any parentheses there. Let's go on to the next one. Ca2 plus combining with carbonate, CO3 two minus. Well, it's plus two, minus two. So those automatically cancel. One calcium, one carbonate, which has the formula CO3. So that's it for that one. All right, next I have calcium 2 plus and hydroxide OH minus. So I have 2 plus minus 1. Well, I need two of these then to cancel out the positive 2 charge. And I circled this one because it's polyatomic. If I need two of them, then I have to use parentheses. Okay, so calcium, I used one. Hydroxide is OH, but I have to put it in parentheses because I need more than one of them. I need two this time. And this is probably um, one of the most commonly made errors in writing uh, formulas is forgetting these parentheses around hydroxide. So just remember, it's polyatomic. So when you need more than one of them, you have to have those parentheses. Okay. Next, calcium with sulfate, plus two, minus two. Easy, that one's already balanced. So one calcium and then one of these SO4s. So that's that formula, calcium sulfate. And then here we have a two plus and a three minus in phosphate. 
So this is one of those kind of tricky ones where you have a plus two minus three. They both go into six, right? So in order to get this charge to be a positive six, you have to use three calciums, right? Three calciums times a positive two charge would give us a plus six charge. So calciums, I need three. Phosphates, in order to get this charge to negative six, I need two of them. And it's polyatomic, right? So I need two of them, so I have to have parentheses. PO4, and I said I needed two. So the two goes outside the parentheses. I need two of this whole thing, PO4. All right, that one's tricky. And then the last one, calcium, two plus nitrate with NO3 minus, so it's a negative one, plus two, negative one. I need two of this one. It's polyatomic, so I need parentheses. Calcium, I just needed one. NO3 is the formula for nitrate, and I need two of this. It's NO3 in parentheses, two. All right, and then we will do one more row here with iron, three plus, and we'll go kind of quickly through this one. So iron, three plus, minus one, so I need three of these. It's monatomic, so I don't need parentheses. Here I have a three plus, two minus, so we have that three and two, right? So that means I need two of the irons to make six plus six, and I need three of the carbonates. It's polyatomic, so I need parentheses. CO3, I said I needed three of those. All right, tricky one coming up here, three plus minus one, so I need three hydroxides, but hydroxide is polyatomic, so I need to put parentheses there. One iron, three hydroxides, three of this whole chunk, OH. Okay, uh, next three plus two minus, again we have the three and two combination, which means I need two of these, and I need three of these. All right, my last video cut out, so just to finish up here, um, here iron three plus combining with phosphate has a negative three charge, so you have plus three minus three, those automatically cancel out, so you just need one of each, FePO4, because PO4 is the formula. And then the last one, Fe3 plus, NO3 minus, you need three of the nitrates to balance up that positive three charge, um, and it's polyatomic, so you need parentheses, so that'll be Fe, NO3 in parentheses, and then another three outside of the parentheses. Okay, so my last bit of advice um, is to keep in mind your lettering, uppercase, lowercase. Um, all of these O's up here are oxygen, so they need to be capital O. Whereas down here, a little bit tricky, you have cobalt. So cobalt is capital C, lowercase o. So it should be very clear um, if your O's are capital or lowercase because that is wrong if you use the wrong case. So just be aware of that, be careful, um, make sure your letters are clearly, clearly uppercase or lowercase and your subscripts are small and down below. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good start on your homework assignment. Um, good luck and let me know if you have questions.